What is up you guys? Welcome back to Q-Brick for the second episode of my new castle building series called The Siege of Bricks Conquest. If you saw the first episode, you already know what the idea is for this mock, but hopefully we can welcome some new viewers today, so let me just give you a quick recap of what's going on here. So first of all, what I am building is a part of a collaboration I am making with my friend from the channel Edge of Bricks that will be showing a siege of a medieval castle. It's a continuation of our collab we did almost two years ago, in which he was attacking my lion's castle with his army, but now the tides have changed and I am the attacker commanding the crow army and attacking his castle. Edge of Bricks is hard at work on his castle, which you can check out on his channel in his own building series, and I am building the area in front of the castle, with a part of a village and a road going towards the castle gate over a small river. In the last episode, I already did a part of the ground that is going to be near the castle, a draft of the river and most of the bridge, so if you want to hear some more details about it and haven't seen the first episode yet, I will leave the link in the description of this video. But now it's a brand new episode, so of course I have more progress to show to you guys, as I made some more details surrounding the river, finish the bridge and move on to the second base plate. But before we get to that, make sure you smack that like button and consider subscribing if you are new to my channel. I make a lot of very detailed mocks across many different LEGO teams, so everyone should find something interesting for themselves. And by doing that, you help my channel grow, and the bigger it gets, the more awesome builds I can make for you guys. We've just hit 3000 subs, which is another great milestone for me. And because of that you can expect a little surprise in the coming weeks, so make sure to stay tuned. But let's get back to the main topic of this video, that is the actual progress I was able to make since the last episode. Like I already said, I expanded my work on the second base plate and started making the road that is going towards the bridge. Here I've changed the concept a bit since the last time you saw the build, but we'll come back to that in a while because first I want to talk about the base plate that holds the river. So, because I only got part of my orders, I couldn't complete the river itself. But luckily, I got so many of the transclear plates that I could build on the sides and was able to make both of the riverbanks. Since I started doing those the last time, now I just had to stretch the idea on both sides. So, on the right side, I finished the rockwork that is slowly going downwards covered with olive green grass all the way to the front of the mock where it transitions to the snot freeform. This style is what we agreed on with Edge of Bricks and it will go all along his front of the castle. If you saw his building series, you can imagine how seamless it should look when we combine our builds together, especially when I will cover the grass with some actual plants like Edge of Bricks did in his last episode. On the other side of the river, I decided to make the riverbank completely different and made a mix of mud and cane made with these olive green grass pieces, but since the rest of the build will be covered in a much more vibrant grass with regular green, I had to come up with some kind of a nice transition. So here I started mixing the olive green cane with some green leaves that are covering the ground towards this small dune, which unfortunately I wasn't able to make complete because I'm still waiting for bricks and pieces order with a bunch of wedge plates. I think when completed it should look good having a couple of dark tan wedges and covered with some green ones, but we'll see how it goes. From the front it of course transitions into a snot freeform just like on the other side of the river, but here I think I will make a switch from dark tan to a green edge since I have plenty of green pieces for that. As it was all I could do here without the extra pieces, I then decided to finish the bridge which you could already see the last time. I got a lot of great feedback on the bridge technique so you all seem to like how I did it, and now that it's all complete it looks even better. The only thing here that bothers me is the gap that was formed because of the bending of the bridge deck, so that's a thing I will have to fix, but for now this part will have to wait. After the bridge I just added some small rocks on both sides, since the kingdom builders had to reinforce the riverbank a bit so the bridge wouldn't collapse with all the traffic going through here to get to the castle gate. And when looking from the back, here it is almost done with a rock covered with some mud, 
and smoothly changing to a dark grey back wall that will be going all along the backside of the mock. Here I decided to save up some dark tan bricks and plates and made it a bit less detailed with mostly dark grey that I have a lot more than the tans. I also wanted to cover the backside with some plates to get it ready for the next stage of the build with a plain dark tan surface and a small brown opening where the pig pen will go. But the rest turned out not as simple as I thought. And that is because the road just couldn't be a straight line. If you remember my plan from the last episode, I wanted to make a road going all along the mock towards the left side, but because of the curved turn I had to change the concept a bit. Because the road couldn't have the truck marks going across, I had to make it turn along with the wedge plates, so here I decided to make it in separate sections that are not parallel to the bridge, but turning with each section using 2x3 wedge plates. It should be enough to make the track marks look natural, but there was a lot of more work with it than I expected. But after a couple of hours, I was able to make the main concept of the road structure and it is now ready to be covered with all the dark tan and medium nougat pieces. For now, the individual sections are easily removable, so I can take them out and build the section outside of the home oak. Unfortunately, I don't have parts to cover all of them, but I can at least start, so I figured why not make it on screen. So let's now jump into a short time lapse and see how much of the road I can actually cover without having to order new parts. And we are now officially out of dark tan bricks and plates that I will need for the rest of the road, so no more building for today. Okay, I could do a part of the next plate, but I'd rather do it when I have parts to complete the whole thing and not only a half of it. 
but at least I can now estimate how much I need to buy to finish the whole road, so Bricklink, here I come. What I made is actually looking very good in my opinion and should look even better covered with some green wedge plates on both sides and heading towards the front of the mock. And because the road is now making a bigger turn towards the front, I will have a lot more room on the left base plate to build the village house and more place for details. But before that, I still have a lot of work ahead and a lot of new parts to order, so we'll have plenty of time to talk about that in the future episodes. For now, I think that's all the progress I wanted to cover, so be sure to let me know how do you like the things I did for this episode, and of course, if you have some suggestions, leave them in the comment section below or just DM me on Instagram. I'm always open to hear your opinions on the builds I make, and who knows, maybe your idea will be included in the mock in the future episodes. But for now, it's time to wrap it up, so again, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one. And until then, as always, remember to keep it bricking.